Hey everyone and welcome back to the Doctor Who review. Today I'm talking about the latest Doctor Who DVD to be released, which is, of course, this. Doctor Who Fury from the Deep, the Lost Classic, has been newly animated for us to finally watch 50 something years after it first aired. Um, 52 years, I think it's been since we last saw Fury from the Deep. Certainly not in my lifetime, but I'm sure there are some people that will remember it and hopefully remember, remember it as fondly as this animation has recreated it. So before I start, I'll just give you a quick look at the DVD and the steel book because I picked up both because I'm a collector that has to own everything. Uh, so this is the DVD. Um, I, of course, like any Doctor Who DVD collector would do, switched the cover so that it has the Paul McGann logo rather than the Jodie Whittaker logo. And yeah, looks great. This isn't like a DVD review, but I thought I'd just give you a quick look at it. Then the Steelbook has really lovely artwork of the TARDIS and the seaweed monster. And then on the back, we have the Doctor, Jamie and Victoria. So now that I've given you a quick look at the material items to accompany this story, we'll have a talk about the story. So I had only ever listened to the audio of Fury from the Deep in the past. I'd never watched the Loose Cannon reconstruction. I just listened to the BBC audio soundtrack of it. Uh, so I went into this with a pretty open mind. I knew that it was highly regarded. I knew that it was considered a classic amongst fans and everyone. Of course, I listened to it and loved it. I thought it was a great story. Perhaps a bit too long, but that's beside the point. Um, but watching the animation for the first time, I watched it in colour. That's the only version that I've watched so far. I might watch the black and white one. I might even watch the reconstruction, the photo recon version. But so far, I've only watched the colour reconstruction. And I have to say, I absolutely loved it. It's a brilliant story that's been so brilliantly recreated in animation. The animation style, I know, is something that a few people have... It's proved to be a bit divisive. People have either really liked it or prefer the style used in the Macro Terror and the Faceless ones that we saw earlier this year. Personally, I don't mind it. It was a bit stilted to begin with. I thought, oh, this is a bit like Power of the Daleks, maybe, the original Power of the Daleks. But once you get sort of one or two episodes in, you think, this is really good. You know, it's sort of, I didn't even think about it. I was just going, this is Doctor Who, this is brilliant. Um, so once you get the animation out of the way, you look at the story and think that it's a really good story. And it you can see why it's so highly regarded. Now that we have it in a visual way, you can really appreciate it. Perhaps the animation takes the story a bit too far and it does things almost too much that wouldn't have been possible in the 1960s. Particularly, there's a sequence at the start of episode six um, regarding the Doctor, Jamie and Victoria escaping the seaweed monsters in the helicopter. In the original scene, it's n nowhere near as dramatic or as action-packed as it is in the animation. But then again, you're using animation as your format. Use it. You know, you can do things in animation that you could never do in live action, even with Doctor Who as it is today. So if you've got animation as your tool, use it. I don't mind that at all. They did a similar thing with the macro in the macro terror. The macro in the animation looked so much bigger and better than they ever did in the TV story. So I honest to God don't mind that. I think that's a great way of using the animation format to your advantage. Other than that, we of course have Victoria's departure, which I have to say was really well, really well done on animation. It worked so much better than I ever thought it would, and certainly a lot better and a lot more emotional than Ben and Polly's departure in the Faceless Ones. That seemed a bit 
too simple for a companion's goodbye. It was just sort of sending them on their way. But with Victoria, you really do get that sense that her, Jamie and the Doctor have become this sort of family almost. You know, both in the show and, of course, in real life. So that was really well handled and props to Deborah Watling and Fraser Hines for incredible performances in the original. And then kudos to the animation team, of course, for lovingly translating that emotional scene into an animation. The seaweed monsters look great, it has to be said. Um, I've already mentioned that sequence at the start of episode six, but the way that they are done in this story, the, the way that the seaweed gradually reveals itself and you see the invasion begin is really well done, and especially with the scenes in, with the seaweed and the pipes. I really got the sense that that was really well done considering it was done through animation. There's not a great deal else to say really. It's a fairly run-of-the-mill, base under siege story that it's just really good. It's a really entertaining six-parter. Again, though, it does slog a little bit from here and from time to time, but that's nothing that is unexpected from a 1960s six-parter. Um, and I would say that it was definitely deserving of the animation treatment. And I can't wait to see what comes next. Apparently, we have Evil of the Daleks and the Abominable Snowmen next. More Trouts and Stories, which is certainly a good thing because they are two of my absolute favourite Second Doctor stories and it would be brilliant to get them in the animation format. Although I do hope to see more William Hartnell animations coming soon, notably this bad boy here, Dalek's Master Plan. What I would give to see that fully, besides the Feast of Stephen, obviously. Um, so there we go, guys. There's my review of Fear from the Deep, or rather my sort of thoughts on it's not really been a review it's just been a bit of a rambling of it um but yeah i absolutely love this story it's really good the animation's great great performances great story everything's brilliant so if you can pick up the steelbook or the dvd or the blu-ray head on out now and pick it up i'm sure you can pick it up from all good retailers supermarkets dvd shops amazon zoom Wherever you normally get your DVDs from, they will stock it, probably. So thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you again next time for another Doctor Who review. Bye.